This video will discuss deseasonalizing a data set that contains a seasonal pattern for the purpose of forecasting uh, the future data. The template is in the Seasonal 1 Excel file and there's a description of the steps that we will review in the Seasonal 1 PDF file. The first part of the Seasonal 1 PDF file contains the directions on where to get the demand data for product A from the product sales data file. The directions are here to create a pivot table from that larger data set and get the data that you'll see in this exercise. The actual sales or demand data from product A in the data set are shown here in column C. There are 36 months of actual demand data and they're labeled month 1 to 12 in each of the three years contained in the data set. The demand graphically appears as shown in the chart. What we see is that the peak of demand seems to occur in each year during the same month and some of the other points such as the low point in month two appear to occur in the same month each year. There seems to be a seasonal pattern in the data within each year. So this pattern will have to be accounted for when we create the demand forecast. The first step in creating the demand forecast is actually to remove the seasonal pattern from the data. We'll do this by creating a centered moving average. The centered moving average averages 12 monthly periods in order to remove the seasonality. Because there are an even number of seasonal periods within each year, we'll have to actually make the centered moving average the average of two separate 12 months periods. There are 12 monthly periods in the data, so when we calculate the centered moving average, we are going to lose the first six periods because it takes six periods before we'll have 12 months to average together. I've highlighted the first six periods here in gray in order to remind myself that I won't be able to calculate a centered moving average for those periods. To calculate the centered moving average, I'm first going to average the first 12 months of the data set and I am on the line for period 7. Because we need to center the data on period 7, we're also going to average periods 2 up to period 13, which is also a 12-month period. You can now see with the colors that Excel has highlighted for the ranges that these two periods overlap except for period 1 and period 13. So what we do is add these two averages together put them inside a closed and open parentheses, and then divide them by 2. That way we'll have an average of 12 periods that is centered on period 7. This formula can be copied down until we get to the last six actual data points. That would be period 30 or month 6 of the third year in this data set. We lost 
six monthly periods in the centered moving average at the beginning of the data, and now we're going to lose six monthly periods at the end of the data. I'm going to freeze the top line of the worksheet so I can see the column headings as a move forward. Now that we have a centered moving average, the second step in deseasonalizing the data is to calculate a seasonal index. The seasonal index is the actual demand data divided by the centered moving average. Because there's no centered moving average for the first six periods, we'll have to begin the calculation at period seven. Actual demand divided by the centered moving average. That formula can be copied down until we get to the last six actual demand periods. We end the seasonal index calculation the same place that we ended the centered moving average calculation. I highlight those cells in gray at the bottom of the seasonal index column to remind myself that there are no centered moving averages for those periods, so we can't calculate a seasonal index. Because there are 36 periods of monthly data, we will be able to average, we, we've lost one period for each month of the year, but we still have two observations for each month that we can average together in order to get a better estimate of the monthly effect or seasonal effect of demand being in a certain month. We want to go ahead and list that average seasonal index for every row in our worksheet. So we'll start the calculation at period one. <laughs> the idea is that on period one, which is a month one row, we want to average the seasonal index for every observation that we have for month one. One of those appears here on line 14 in period 13. The other one appears on line 26 in period 25. So really we want to average, in this case, two values. I want to avoid just adding those together and dividing them by two because we can build a for function using the average if Excel function that will allow us in the end to make fewer errors. So average if requires three inputs, requires the range of cells to evaluate. We want to evaluate all the cells for the month, and we want to do that on the same rows where we see the seasonal indices. And we want to put dollar signs on the rows. The criteria is going to be the month. On this row, row 2, the month that we want to average seasonal indices for is month 1. We don't want an absolute reference on the criteria because we want to copy this formula down and reference the other months in the rows that correspond to those months. The range of values that we want to average are the seasonal indices. And again, we want absolute references on the rows. So this function will go out, identify every row in the blue range where month one appears, because month one is the criteria, 
and then we'll average the corresponding values in the seasonal index. If we copy this down one row and click in the formula, we notice that the criteria has changed to month two, but the range and the average range have remained the same. Because of this, we can copy this formula all the way down to period 48, because in fact, period 48, 37 to 48, are ultimately the periods for which we want a forecast. What you'll notice is that the average seasonal indices simply repeat every 12 months. So this 12 set of average seasonal indices repeats the same in the second 12 months and in the subsequent years. Now we're ready to deseasonalize the data. To deseasonalize the data, all we simply do is take the actual data and divide by the average seasonal index. and copy this formula down until we run out of actual observations, which is after period 36. This series has been added to our chart, and what we see now is that the orange series has a similar trend to what we see in the blue data, but that the seasonal pattern has been removed. Ultimately, when we forecast, we'll want to put the seasonal pattern back. However, for the time being, what we will do is first fit a forecast using an averaging and possibly trend method to the orange series before then adding back the seasonal pattern to get our final forecast.